Corey Miller, better known by his stage name C. Murder, is a New Orleans hip-hop artist and songwriter. Early in his career Corey would reveal that his rap name was inspired by all the death he would see while growing up in the B.W. Cooper public housing development, also known as the Cali Yo Projects. She man, I see everything go down in the Cali over here. Man. Crime, kids getting killed, drug sales, little girls turn to dope fiends quick. After high school Corey joined the United States Army. He also served time in the Gulf War as a combat medic. When his brother Kevin Miller was murdered in 1990, Corey went AWOL in order to join his family and mourn the death of his sibling. He would later move to Richmond, California, to join his two brothers Percy and Vi Sean Miller. While in California, Percy Miller, better known by his rap name Master P, would form the now legendary No Limit Records, alongside his two brothers. In 1995, Master P moved from California back to New Orleans to relocate No Limit Records with a set of new artists and the groundbreaking producers, Beats by the Pound. Seamurder went on to release several solo albums of his own through the label, including his 1998 platinum album, Life or Death. He would find himself in a fight for his life and freedom just four years after the release of this album. Do you know who shot the guy? No, we don't know who shot the guy. Deputy Brian Singleton of the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office was patrolling in the early morning hours of January 12, 2002, when he received a call that shots had been fired inside of the Platinum Club, which was located on Manhattan Boulevard in Harvey, Louisiana. When he arrived, he observed a large crowd of between 75 and 150 people who were screaming and exiting the club in a hectic state. Deputy Singleton made his way through the crowd and observed approximately 100 to 200 patrons inside the club. He also saw the victim. 16-year-old Steve Thomas, who was lying on his back suffering a gunshot wound to his chest. Although Deputy Singleton tried to speak to the victim he was unable to communicate. He then called for medical assistance. Deputy Singleton and other deputies obtained the names, telephone numbers and addresses of the remaining patrons and asked if they had any information concerning the incident or the shooter. Deputy Singleton testified that all of the people he spoke to advised him that they did not see anything. Now let me ask you this. There were a couple of witnesses who identified you as the shooter. So what about those witnesses? They were just making stuff up. Darnell Jordan testified that he worked as security at the Platinum Club and was on duty at the time of the shooting. He recalled seeing Corey Miller at the club. Darnell testified that a fight broke out between the pool table and the dance floor. He said that he saw 15 or 20 people beating one person. Steve Thomas was lying on his back, trying to cover himself while he was getting kicked and punched. He said that he grabbed Corey Miller and told him to chill out. He said the defendant responded all right, but then tried to make his way through. Right after that one gunshot was heard. Darnell testified that he was about one yard away when he saw Corey Miller reach his hand into the pile of people. He said that he saw the gun flash from the end of Corey Miller's arm. He testified that although he never saw Corey with a gun, he assumed that the flash came from what was in his hand. In 2003 a jury unanimously convicted the rapper of second-degree murder but a judge threw out the conviction, ruling that prosecutors had withheld information about witnesses in the case. Rapper known as C. Murder was sentenced today after a jury in Jefferson Parish convicted him on second-degree murder charges. This was the second trial for Corey Miller, who was convicted in the first trial, but that conviction was overturned. Now in this second trial, he was found guilty a second time for the killing of 16-year-old Steve Thomas at an outclosed club across the river. In the second trial, a jury voted 10 to 2 to convict Corey on August 11, 2009 in the death of Stephen Thomas. He was sentenced to serve life without the possibility of parole in the Louisiana State Penitentiary. Nine years later, the key witness against Corey Miller changed his story saying that he lied when he testified that the rapper shot and killed Stephen Thomas. He said that I know that the individual who I saw shoot the gun was not Corey Miller. Miller's attorney, Paul Barker, and the witness, Kenneth Jordan, allege the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office detectives and prosecutors knowingly forced Jordan to make false statements by threatening him with criminal charges in another matter. Paul Barker filed a memorandum seeking a new trial for Miller. The Sheriff's Office and the District Attorney's Office would not comment on the case. In a TV series titled Reasonable Doubt, retired Birmingham, Alabama homicide detective Chris Anderson, who was also featured in the famous reality series The First 48, looked into Corey's case to see if he could find any hope for an appeal. In a segment of the episode, Anderson asked Corey about a particular person. 
So what about this, the, the Juan Flowers? Let me tell you something about me. You ain't gonna never hear nothing come out my mouth turning the thing at nobody else. I even see my own so that just ain't gonna happen. That's just the way I did, that's the way I, I come up. Wow.